footage you saw there is just old footage of the Mako 700. I uh, threw it in there because anytime I put Mako 700 in a title, people are just expecting a writing video. So there's hundreds of writing videos. So if you clicked on this, they can answer the writing video. Go check out a different video. This is going to be no writing after the initial introduction there. So, so um, I'm going to be gearing up to ride again pretty soon. Um, a couple of things I wanted to do, or I need to do, is that um, the uh, 83 that's over there, I got some carbon fiber reeds I'm going to put back in it. The um, 700, Mako 700, I just got the pipe welded. So the pipe was busted. I saw it was leaking for a while. So I took the pipe out and got it welded. All right, so as you can see here, this is the pipe I have welded, the 700 pipe. So I'll be able to, I'll be able to put it back on now. So, be able to ride that one again soon. The other thing was that the, um, you remember, I was also working on the Zable 700, and that one there, the problem I ran into was I needed some help with the um, mounting for the carburetor because the carburetor goes right into the rear shock. Now, a lot of people for the newer engines, I think they do use the uh, Husaberg frames because the shock is mounted uh, further to the um, left-hand side in the frame. It's like over this way, so that it comes over this way and then the carb would come out this way, whereas now the shock is here, so it pushes the carb like this into the frame. Like so, I mean, that frame is really, and even with the Mako 700, the carb just barely fits around it. And, um, and that's with its cylinder induction, whereas this is case induction, it comes from the bottom. And um, so yeah, that one comes up to the bottom, and so it comes right into the shock, you know, it's far over here. So I have somebody who's gonna take a look at that in October, and hopefully we'll be able to weld it. I talked to somebody else who has an 86 um, Mako 500 frame with the same engine, and they had to move the shock back a few inches to clear it. So I'm hoping I can do something like that with this frame instead of start over with a new frame. And that's why it's been sitting for a long time. I tried a few hacks, but yeah, there was nothing. I thought of a bunch of different things, but yeah, no one's gonna work, so. So I have that one to work on. And um, as I said, I had the, uh, the 700 to work on. And yeah, I'm probably gonna try to ride perhaps possibly with the next couple of weeks here. Maybe next weekend even. Take it out and take one of the bikes out. See how it is. See how it is out there. We've also had a lot of fire closures, so a lot of the forest around here has been closed until recently as well. So, but uh, like I said, the, the 700, I started up a few weeks ago, or two months ago maybe. Just took it outside and started right up. So, yeah, most of these bikes, they start right up. You know, I don't use the, whenever I use the, um, ethanol gas, they usually had problems. You'd have to clean the carb. But if you let them sit with either the, the, the you know, 110 octane or even the 92 clear, you know, without the ethanol, they, I mean, either they sit for two years or you start right up. Because you know, the only problem you usually have with starting them up, you know, is something settling, something leaking, or something getting clogged because it dried up, you know, something like that. So, yeah, usually, usually it's the carb clean, but uh, I found that a lot of these bikes, since I don't use the ethanol gas anymore for, for many years now, that they, they start right up after they've been sitting. So I didn't even do anything, I just took it out and started it. Now I did, I did ride that bike a year and a half ago since, I start, since, since it was started. So it sat for a year and a half before I restarted it. Huh. The uh, wife put up this fish tank aquarium, it's 100 gallon. It's been up for maybe a month and a half that, we've been, that they've been stocking it, a month and a half or so. Stocking it with stuff, you know. I like the, I got that grass thing, I like that grass. But uh, yeah, it's got a bunch of things in there. There's even some crabs, a bunch of hermit crabs, you know, different things. So this is one thing. Been, uh, it's 
been going on. Um, been lifting weights a bit, you know, as I mentioned before. I've been able to get up to 80 pounds. Yeah. Um, dumbbell press, so 280 80 pound dumbbells for a few reps. So nowhere near where I used to be, but you know, let's see here. This this goes for farther over here. Let's give this a try. Yeah, give this a try here. Oh. So this is just 70 pounds. So it's got the uh, six ten pounds, a five pound with a two two and a halves, and then the bar is five pounds. So it's this is just 70 pounds. So. Yeah, <laughs> you should be able to do over a hundred, but you know, working my way back up. I'm not sure if I'll get there, but. Sorry there, the uh, microphone unplugged when I leave back, so. But, yeah, as you can see, I can do the 70 pounds, you know, 270 pounds for 10, maybe more reps. Maybe 75 and I can go up to 80. So I've tried so far. Which, um, it's not too bad, you know. I mean, beginning of the year, I could barely do 45 pounds, so. Yeah, this is the very downstairs. Got the theater room over there. The little TV area here. The fish tank. The weight area. And then a little bar area over there. One more thing. <clears throat> So yeah, I plan to be riding, hopefully in a couple of weeks here. Some of the issues I have though with riding, I gotta be careful of, is that um, you know, normally your kidneys are in the back, right? Right under here, they're in the peritoneum, they're very protected in here. Mine's right here. It's right there on the outside. In fact, you can just feel it right there. So just on the outside, so to protect that. And then I also still have my fistula in. Is. You can probably see it here. See that vein. So this is a pretty much a fast artery. If anything just punctures it, it'll spray everywhere. In fact, probably even just hear it by putting the microphone near it. So, so, yeah, those are some of the things that I uh, have to be careful of. I have some other ideas, some other ideas about videos I was going to make. And I started to make them a few months ago. Well, actually, like, back in January, probably. Actually, but I just uh, never finished them. I was around to put them together. They were going to be, one was going to be on various races that Mako had won. Um, perhaps ones that people haven't known about, you know, or hadn't heard of, you know, because people always wonder what races Mako has won. So, for example, um, the 1957, Mako won the first uh, World Motocross Championship for 250s. 
producono svetate e veramente uno sport di stagione. Se questi sentierucci bizzarramente sostituiti all'asfalto fossero travolti dal fango delle prime o delle ultime piogge, lo spettacolo sarebbe da volgia dantesca. Ne assisteremmo a questi salti che mostrano, anche agli increduli, come per volare non occorrono altre ali che quelle della velocità. Ed anche nei momenti più drammatici il... Il pensiero è uno solo, quello di ripartire subito in quella ventata di follia che sembra irresistibile ai patiti del motocross, malattia come tante altre nel mondo dello sport. I cowboys dei 100 all'ora festeggiano il rodeo più rumoroso che si possa immaginare. Alla fine riposo meritatissimo, ma prima ancora l'ultima volata. La spunta in questa prova mondiale il tedesco Hans Betzelbacher, il più pazzo di tutti naturalmente. Um, that was the very first one they ever held, and Mako had won that one. Um, this is a few years before they had called it World Motocross Championship, it was called European, but it eventually was called the World Motocross, it was the same race. So, the other one that people may not have known is Mako also did street racing, for example, and um, uh, they actually got second place um, a couple of years for Isle of Man on the e um, actually won for that class uh, third overall for world motor or world motorcycle championship you know, this is a series of races and another example was just um, uh, this guy in the UK who had won you know 10 years enduro championship on Makos on the Lenny, San Elwed and Numder Canalbars Camry or Canalva. Captain a free of both team Prodain, you Geraint John Solanitlus. Pen Campur Prodain, Bedair Gwais. At my Orion Moram Rodgar, you wife Bob Dies. At Trevor Ferm. And Wahanoliu Ursunebur or Cavandir, do Geraint the Munridur Shaunam, sir. A Fusa Gwais of Ferm, Simpender Venivant of Silogat Geraint Roy, you wake. Nidar chwarae bach mae'r rhedeg ferm chwech anna cerfel hon. Ac felly, mae geraint yn ffodus iawn o gael cefnogaeth i deulu ac yn arbennig i frawd gareth, sydd a dawn a'n hygoel at adeiladu beicau rasio. Yn reid ar tra galluog i hunan, mae ganddo ddealltwriaeth rhyfeddol o dechneg rasio i frawd. Nid yn unig mae gareth yn adeiladu'r beicau cyflymaf yn y byd yn diwro, ond hefyd rhai ymedr i frawd ddi bynnu arnynt. Factor bwysig iawn wrth ystyried yr as chwe diwrnod. Ar gern beiciau Almeinig, Maiko, mae llwyddiant geraint wedi bod hyd yma. A ger iddynt derbyn cynigion hael gan ffatrioedd siapaniaidd, cred y ddau frawd mae gyda'r Maiko y mae'r cyflau gorau ennill. A beth sy'n gwneud y Meiko mor arbennig? Wel, mae o'n perfformio'n dda mewn amryw o ffyrdd. 
Rhaid i feic yn diwro da a lle neidio ar llithro fel beic motocross os yw amateb gofonion egr yr as chwed diwrnod. Erbyn hyn, cyflymder yw prif beth, ac mae'r beic yn diwro modern yn gallu ogi reidar i dra mwy o tir na fyddai sêr y pum degeddi mydd i ystyried yn bosibl. Mewn yn diwro dau ddwrnod y gynhaliwyd yn gynharach eleni, gwelwn y reidwyr yn symud pwysau cyrff yn egnio er mwyn i galluogi i drin y beic yn hwylus. Golygar amseroedd tyn sy'n rhaid cadw atynt fod y reidwyr yn gorfod ma'n teisio'r hanner cyfle i fynd heibio i gilydd ac anwybyddu peryglon amlwg fel llwch a cherig. Mae hyd yn oed reidwyr arbennig fel Geraint Jones angen arfwysg i'w ddiogelu tan teithio'r gyflymdra fel hyn. Aled Williams, so Danor in our hikan oil lambed, said the Miss Good. Without sponsors, I just wouldn't be doing it. It's, it's as simple as that. It's a very expensive sport, and especially to do it at top level. I need to do all the two day British Championship events, all the European Championship, the international six days. Without your sponsors, it would just not be on. Impossible. But as you can imagine, riding six days on any sort of surface is going to be hard. But on rough terrain, such as we will ride in the six days, it's very, very demanding on the body. Arms, legs, neck, very, very demanding. Nid yn unig ar gorff yr un ar. Ond ar i amser hefyd. See a lot of moss and rushes. It's obviously going to be wet and soft. If it's stony, there's obviously going to be rocks close to the surface. So you've got to keep all these sort of things in mind. And if you're riding in the forest, you've got to be keeping an eye open for sticks and logs about the floor, you know, because unless you've seen it before you come to it, it's surely going to bring you off. Nid yn unig gyda'r ddaear mae problemau, o fewn pedair awr ar hugain i'r sgwrs na trochineb i geraint. Maiko wedi'r yr gorau gynhyrchu. Mae ffatri enwog yr Almaen wedi dioddef gan dacteg dympio'r siapaniaid, a olygai fod beiciau Maiko yn ddwy waith pris rhai eu cysylliwyr. Mae hi'n ergyd drom i geraint y gareth, wedi treulio'r holl amser yn perfeithio'r Maiko. Mewn cannoedd o gystadlaethau, maent erbyn hyn angen beic arall o'r un safon, a diwr dewis ddim yn eang. Ond beth yw problem, geraint? Beth sy'n mor arbennig am beic yn diwro? So, that was one video I was going to put together. Another video I was going to put together was on the rise in popularity of the 700, like from you know, when it first started, the very first ones, who was making the you know bigger board, two strokes, to the different phases. I, I consider them to be in several different eras. And it's been very popular, you know. And so I was going to look at the rise of the popularity of into, into the more mainstream because you know, it used to not be as, as mainstream many years ago. First of my channel, original videos were from Mark, who had bought it in 2010. In fact, the first, in fact, people probably don't even know this or even remember this anymore, but the very, very first video of an actual Mako 700, the modern Mako 700, on YouTube or on the internet was actually from, um, well there were some that were from the ATK, there were some ATKs that came on early on that were the supermotos, but for actual dirt bike, um, the first video that's known from the modern ones was from a guy in UAE Emirates, you know, United Arab Emirates, <coughs> and he was riding in the desert with one of these. And the story goes that um, he ended up, he had, he, so, Costler had sold it to Maker International in the UK. Maker International UK sold it to this guy in UAE. Now the guy in UAE claimed that he had a kind of problem with it, so he, he wanted to give it back. And so Maker International sold it to Mark in South Africa. And so then it was shipped from there to South Africa. And made it black. And so, um, whenever the guy, so when our market created it, it needed the new kick, the kick shifter was broke. So you needed a kick shifter. But um, those are the original videos that you saw from me. But the original, original videos was taken off the internet was they're riding in the desert in UAE. And you can't find those videos you know, anymore. 
Um, Mark's videos were up on my channel. Mark dynoed it, the Maker 700, and he sent me the videos of it. So I had these videos I put up of the Maker 700, and I was trying to get the numbers from but he never sent me numbers. So I Somebody, he's like, oh yeah, I don't remember what they were. So I never got any sheets from them. No idea what, what. So people say, oh, you dined it, where are the numbers? Well, I didn't dine it. Someone in South Africa dined it, and he never sent me the numbers. He just sent me the video. So that's why I just have the, the video of it being dynoed. Um, but um, the uh, Hewa Power, you know, he had originally dynoed the 700 and his setup. And that's what the numbers are on Costco's website. site which says 82 horsepower for the 700. Um, ATK claims to have dynoed it and that those numbers weren't correct and that they're claiming that it says it was 700 or 78 sorry not 700 78 horsepower. Now I think part of the difference is that you know if you look at Hewa Power setup it's I think from the rear shaft not the rear wheel but um, ATK maybe it's the rear wheel but other than that that's all I can say. And again, the peak power for that bike was at 6,500, you, know, you know, RPM, you know, around there. And it, whenever I had my, you know, dials off from there, and whenever I put the tachometer on my 700, you know, holding it down as hard as I could, you know, it, you know, it only ever got up to 8,100 um, RPM. So uh, that's the thing. People, people kept you know, saying to me that, why doesn't that make 800, 1,000, you know, 1,000 horsepower or 100 horsepower, you know, see if 100 just tuned a little bit makes 100 horsepower. Like, <laughs> that's what you're talking about. You know, first of all, it depends on where in the RPM range it is, right? It depends, that's a huge factor, right? Where is it in the RPM range? If it's low, you know, you may seem like a little bit of horsepower, but really you're in such a low RPM and you're having that much power, you know, versus being up at, it means you have a lot more torque versus being all the way up at like 13,000 RPM and making it meaning you have, you know, a lot more spin, you know, so. Um, but yeah, I don't really know what they make, but I'll tell you that the, for one, they've got the 700 pipe on them or the 500 pipe on them. So you could tune that. They're also case inducted. I know someone who did this and widened his 700. I don't know what the, you know, but you can probably do things. Plus mine, you know, mine doesn't have inner rotor. It's got the power dynamo flywheel on mine, my 700. I have the inner rotor on the 620. You know, so, um, so those are, those are differences you can do to tune it or whatever. Runs fine for me. And um, I didn't get it originally because, you know, whenever I bought it, you know, even for now, I mean, <clears throat> I have the Mako um, 620, the Mako 660 that I built, and then I have the Mako 700 or 685, and I have a Zabo 700. And the reason that I have these bikes has absolutely nothing to do with them trying to be the most powerful bike in the world or claim that they've got this massive horsepower, whatever they have, you know. It, you know, I even have a 610 cylinder, I just don't have a setup for it. but. You know, it was about, I was collecting Makos, right? So I had collected all the 500s and I had run into, and I never thought I'd ever buy a 700. You know, I was collecting all the 500s and I was running out of kind of years that were differences to buy for 500s. And I ended up having the cash at the time to be able to buy these other ones. So 600, 620, someone's asked for one to buy. I said, okay, I'll buy that bike. You know, this was already after I had put in the order for the 700. So, so 620 was an accident. I was going to buy the 685 just because it was, you know, a collectible bike, popular collectible. So I was buying that, and I was collecting Makos. So then, okay, someone at the same time asked, asked me, "What about 620?" Okay, well I don't have a 620. I'll buy that one. So then I had those two, and then I saw on eBay somebody had the um, 660 
for sale, but he looked at it at 685, so I just thought I would get it for spare parts. And I got it though, and you know, realized it wasn't actually a you know 685. It was a Merkel Arrow six Merkel Arrow Merkel Era 660 engine. I decided to build that bike. Then the Zabel. Um, the reason I got that was because it's another collectible thing, because Zabel was actually made from Mako's. And so that would be a, you know, a modern, you know, another modern Mako with different R&D than the current Mako's, because those, that R&D was for sidecar racing. But it was based on Mako, it was very similar to Mako, but they are case inducted and everything. So again, it was another collectible thing. You know. um, it had nothing to do with by ever trying to buy a 700. You know, it, all, it was all about uh, the collectability of the big bore Makos. So that's why I don't have any other, um, you know, I don't have a Husqvarna 1000cc or anything like that or dual cylinder. You know. So there are some Makos that I don't have though that are big bore. You know, obviously there's, original, there's the original set of 750s, 760s. You know, there's the, I don't have not built the 610. I don't have the 575 or the 570, there it was. I don't have the 545. Um, uh, motocross bike. You know, I don't have the dual cylinder 640. Yeah, there's a 320 dual cylinder 640. I don't have that. You know, there's only like five of those made. So hopefully I'll be out there, have a uh, video of me riding.